The question asked about the rise and fall. We have talked about the remote, um, you know, fall of the causes of the fall. We have talked about the remote and the immediate. That's looking at David and Solomon and the immediate being what? Rehoboam. So in the same way, the success, the rise of the kingdom has to be David era and then that of Solomon being the remote, do you get it? And then Solomon will be, the uh, Rehoboam will be the immediate. So looking at that, and mostly this question don't come like that about the remote rise of the kingdom. Usually they will be specific to ask you about David or Solomon. So in this case, David's achievement, this led to the rise of the kingdom. Politically, we get to know that under David's rule, the Lord prepared the nation by defeating the enemies. Now, they were able to defeat the Philistines, the Moabites, the Amorites, and then they conquered. They opened up the whole place. Then they conquered Edom, which was valuable source of natural resources, such as iron, gold, and copper. They also defeated the Ammonites. And in fact, if you look at David's reign, it was during David's reign that we have the whole land boundary that the Lord sold to Abraham being covered for the Israelites. So Genesis chapter 15, verse 18 to 21, give us a land map of what God gave to Abraham. He moves between the, the Nile River um, and that of the Ephraim River. Um, it goes on to the boundary. Everywhere that the Lord mentioned, David was able to conquer. So he opened up the whole kingdom so wide because he was a good fighter. Spiritually, David returned the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem from the house of Obed Edom, according to First Chronicles chapter 15. So he came back, he was trying to get the nation back to their spiritual root. He did not fail to acknowledge God as the one who guaranteed Israel military victories and material prosperity. According to 2 Samuel chapter 22, David makes sure that he acknowledged God at all times. He secured Mount Moria as the location for the house of God, where he wanted to build to the glory of God. But God did not allow him because his hands were stained with blood. First Chronicles chapter 22, verse 1. And then he prepared for the construction of the temple and selection of its officers. He made sure everything was set for uh, Solomon to build. So spiritual, politically, he worked spiritually, he worked there too. We have talked about the weaknesses here. Now let's look at Solomon's also achievement that made the kingdom to expand. Now, Solomon brought in the domestic policy, yes. But it looks like uh, we are trying to put down something that looks like I'm going a bit fast. <laughs> oh, sorry, please forgive me. Yes. Um, please, where do you want me to go over? I say move. Uh, the contribution of David to the rise of the kingdom. Okay. So we look at politically, David was able to conquer all his arch enemies, especially the Philistines, the Moabites, and the Aramites. And then what helped him most, or what helped uh, Israel most, was when he was able to conquer Edom, which was full of iron, gold, and copper. Then when he conquered the Amorites, it opened up the whole area where God had told Abraham in Genesis chapter 15, verse 18 to 21. Let's open it and read. So that we know the whole boundary that God gave to Abraham. 
Genesis 15, 18 to 21. Yes. And all these places were covered through the leadership of David and his army, fighting and conquering one after the other. Genesis 15, 18 to 21. Yes. On that day, mm -hmm. the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, mm -hmm. saying, to your offering, I give this land from the river, from the river of Egypt to mm -hmm. the great river, mm -hmm. the river of Ephraim, mm -hmm. the land of the Canaanites, mm -hmm. the, the Canaanites, mm -hmm. the Cadmonites, mm -hmm. the Hittites, and the Parasites, the Raphim, the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Gigashite, the Gigashite, and the Jebusite. Okay. So all this boundary David covered. Also, you nearly said gigabyte. So I was waiting to hear this. <laughs> okay. uh, so basically, David covered all these areas. So politically, this are this are achievement of David. I hope you guys you get it. So a question yeah. like, what are the achievements of David? So you note it. Okay. Number two, spiritually, one, under the spirituality, David returned the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem from the house of Obedido, according to First Chronicles chapter 15. Now, do you remember what happened to the Ark of the Covenant in First Samuel? What happened to it? Yes, we did that one too. Mm -hmm. That made the glory of the Lord depart. And that led me bring to you what we called Ichabod. You remember I talked about Ichabod? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, remember I brought this Ichabod. What led to all these things happening? Yes, how did the ark? Okay, I've opened it for you. What did the ark? What happened to the ark? According to First Samuel. Now, we get to know that the three sons of Eli, sorry, the two sons of Eli were very um, ungodly. So at the point in time, they went forward during the time of a, a war. They were told by the people to bring the Ark of the Tabernacle of the, of the Covenant. Now, these two sons of Eli went in to take it, taking the advice of the people without consulting God. And then they lost the battle seriously. And the battle was against the Philistines. Now, the defeat, the defeat was so crushing that the ark was also stolen. And the two sons of Eli were slain. We remember that when the news got to Eli about the ark being stolen and the two sons died, he did what? He collapsed. The ark was later returned to a, play, a private home. And that is what we are talking about. So the ark of the covenant was gone. And that is where the daughter-in-law of Eli, when he, she gave birth, named the child Ichabod, meaning that the glory of God had been withdrawn from Israel. I'm out for your children, way did that do. Ntinumun kubona mon kai misremo. And yes, I am so mu ko meka oh, I dear Mr. Papa can you wanka? Good news, Pony say, would you who are time my sample videos? You know, my catch and bosom was subscribing. You get any movie uh, video that is placed on. Oh, my entry, Miss Remo, a be a ye. Minimum question, a beba. And no baby's a question, I beba. I don't know the questions that will come. I only know the area which I'm going through with you. 
Okay, so Moses returned the covenant, the Ark of the Covenant. Now, he did not fail to acknowledge God who granted Israel victory and prosperity. He makes sure say everything that happened, he acknowledged that it was God. So he brought the people's mind back to God who grant victory and prosperity. He also made sure that Mount Moria was secured enough for the building of the temple, even though he was not allowed by God. And that was all. He even made preparation for the construction of the temple and even officers who were to work on the temple. When you read 1 Chronicles chapter 22, 28, and 29, you get all this. The reason is that he wanted Israel to know their God. And therefore, he was making everything possible to make sure that they were closer to God. And that was why he was promised an internal kingdom, the Messianic kingdom by God. So, the two main achievements of David. Okay. Baba? Yes. But, uh, David only made preaching for the building of the temple, but he didn't build, start the building of the temple, right? Yes, he didn't build the temple. But as I said, it was started by. Is I that, asked the question of. It was yes. started by Solomon, right? I'll say that later. Is that it was started by Solomon? Solomon. Yes, the temple was built by Solomon, but David yes. made sure that well, most of the materials that would be needed were die for Solomon. Okay. Uh, so Solomon, okay. there, uh, one way or the other, it was like he just came to execute it and brought new policies that made it work for him. Okay. Thank you. I have seen a question of that nature. That's what I'm asking. Oh, okay. It's good you have eyes too. Okay. So, so we look... Um, uh, Papa, one, sorry, one question. Uh, in case we are asked uh, who initiated the building of the temple, um, is it David. the one who prepared it or who yeah, started? David. Okay, it's David. Okay. David even okay. wanted to build it, and then the Nathan, the prophet, told him that no, God says no, because his hand is full of blood. So he did everything down for Solomon to build. Okay. Okay. Now the achievement of Solomon. Solomon brought his domestic policy. And this domestic policy constituted the final court of appeal and for taxation purposes where he divided the nation into 12 districts. Now, he made it so efficient for him to receive taxes and everything was well structured. The whole place was put into district, like the way Ghana is put under regions to make sure that their heads of the various districts who are in charge of the king's work. So he made it go on what we we'll call decentralization. So if people are saying that decentralization is, is a modern thing, I tell everybody I know, in the time of Solomon, even in David's day, in Moses' days, Jethro asked him to do the same thing. There was decentralization there. I don't know whether you remember the advice of Jethro, his father-in-law. Yeah? Yeah, yeah we remember. Mama, for me, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. So he had a good policy. He also maintained a large. Okay, you. He also maintained a large army force and had a fighting role. He was able to build the military. Solomon built a strong military force base Baba. and make sure that all the borders were covered. He had people who were ready to protect the land. So one way or the other, even though the people he was not so much into battle like his father, I guess people were also afraid of him. 
Yes, please, your question. Uh, the organization, you know, as the words we can use here, that's to do, do we, are, we are in a simple one and can bear the file. Wes, me but I want to emphasize. The domestic policies, no. Policies, no. The, the domestic policies. Oh, okay. Me and this, me but I want to emphasize, so sir. Let me share, let me move on. Because final court of appeal for taxation purposes and divided into 12 districts. Uh, broad tax so, burden, but I just say that she will say that uh, domestically Solomon uh, uh, decentralized his, his rule. Hey, Nana, Oklahoma is decentralizing. Me me have this centralizing number. I na o se me wey si su su. Na ka u ko bu bu mu pu a wa san ko yin. Anyway, but you are correct. That is it. I hope you are correct. You get it, Papa. Onu ano akan. There's a word in the word thing. Decentralizing, no su su mu thing. But onu ano akan. Why me nia? So so this to uh, let's see, make sure that. Taxes collection, tax collection was efficient and then development to the various areas where he grew was very fast, right? Pacho no one. Bon Samon, question with the about Ubi Trap. Yes, Ababa. Oh, Baba Baja Yenta has not been bombing Samaman. I am to ask you, dear, you'll be at your new coalitions. I win you. I can win you. Anyway, so basically, he built a strong army force which were ever ready to protect the people. In fact, his army force was the largest at the time. And that is one of the great achievements. He had extensive building projects. Now, Solomon had a very good eye for buildings. Now the palace of Solomon, which took 13 years to complete, and then he built other cities too. So the references are there for you to note. First Kings chapter nine, verse 13 to 22. That talks about the building of the temple or uh, the building of the palace. Then you constructed a temple and dedicated it. So you remember we talked about the temple. The temple was twice the size of the mosaic tabernacle. You remember that we talked about the tabernacle, the size of the tabernacle. We discussed how the tabernacle will look like. So the temple was twice the tabernacle. The tabernacle, I don't know, I think the tabernacle will be maybe here or the other ones. Let me see if I have the tabernacle here. Size of the tabernacle. Okay. So it's in the other one. Okay. And that is Solomon for us. Okay. The other thing that Solomon also did, that was a great achievement, was, okay, we are not his father. He had good foreign policies and trade. Now, he was able to establish fortification throughout the land of Edo, making sure that he traded gold for other things that he didn't have. Solomon did it and then he developed and controlled the metal industry of Palestine, as well as traded with many state, uh, nations. The verses are there for us. He was recognized as the richest of all the kings. He gained such international respect and recognition that his worth increased from gift from far and near. And note that he was a man of wisdom. So this is a temple Solomon built, the interior decoration and all these things. Being treated earlier, that is how. Now Rehoboam, Rehoboam, um, because he didn't rule in the United Kingdom, he ruled only in the divided kingdom. That's Rehoboam. Rehoboam only ruled in the divided kingdom. He didn't rule in the United Kingdom. 
Okay. So that will end that question for us. So you see one question, how we have to go back, trying to understand the whole thing very well, because in answering that question, you have to know what you are talking, because you are going to narrate something for everyone to see or to read that you know. So in narrating it, you have to say it for them to know that you know, with quotations and stars. So when you are narrating, note that quotations are important. Any question up to this point? Baba, how long did it take Solomon to build a temple? The temple? Uh, I, I, I don't have it offered, but I, I think it should be in our slide. I will quickly oh. check for you. Uh, the palace was taking that. Yes, the palace was 13. And I, th I think I'll, I'll quickly, I'll get it for you. But it's in a slide. It's in a slide. I'll check it for you, okay. What are the achievements? So another question. What are the achievements and failures of kings? So David, Solomon, Rehoboam, Jeroboam. These are all the questions that keep on coming. So you solve them. We have done this. Now let's look at this question, for instance. I think this one came in the year 2018. No, 2017, yes. 2017 past question. The year 2017 marks for the fifth 500th anniversary of the Reformation. Briefly recount the events leading to the Reformation and its impact on world community. We're winning reformation. No one should to me. Yes. So the reformation. What led to the reformation? Who started the reformation? What do you know about the reformation? Because the church you are going to pastor is part of the reformed church. Mm. Do you get it? And so you have to know something about the reformation. Yes, sir. And I'm going to give you an assignment on this. Tomorrow, okay. just send me an email on what you have, anything you know about the reformation. You can put it, or maybe you can just put it on the page. Just type it, whatever you can write. You can even write it and screenshot it and put it there. We'll read it and it will help others too. So reformation, let's all do a little research. And why is praising oh. part of the reformed church? Why do we call ourselves a reformed church? All those things, let's get it. Okay. Thank you. The next set or type of essay is what we call the persuasive or argumentative. Now, in this part, we have either you support a topic or you are against a topic. So usually, you try to collect, generate, and evaluate vivid point and establish a position in that manner. For example, let's look at one of the questions. We have all done debates before, so that's how it goes. For example, Israel proposed an Israel prospect during the reign of Solomon. What accounted for this? So they have put you straightforward in a straight jacket. Israel prospered during the reign of Solomon. What accounted? I don't know whether you. Okay, very simple. So you will yeah. have to now state, because here they have made their statement straightforward. A, B, C, D, just as we have just done the achievement of Solomon, mm. what he did, mm. and because of that, Israel prospered. If you think it is not true, you have to state your point that, oh, you disagree that Israel prospered during the reign of Solomon. Why? Because of A, B, C, D, D, T, then you finish. I don't know whether you get it. And that is all. Another question, the book of Hebrews, 
credit Abraham as a man of faith. Why? So here they have stated this straightforward. Yes. Do you get it? We all know the book of mm. Hebrew credit Abraham as a man of faith. Why? And this is a past question. Mm. That means that you are now supposed to either say it's true.